Hi, this is section 1.8, intro to linear transforms. What we want to do here is take a vector and manipulate it by uh, multiplying by a transformational matrix. This section will introduce vocabulary and concepts about transforming a vector within the same space and even to another space dimension. If you haven't already done the matrix transformations with Excel, I would do that before this lesson and especially before 1.9. Okay, multiplication of matrices. Some of you have this a little bit and some of you don't. So we want to try this example. What we want to do is always go ahead and multiply using the rows going across. So we're going to take this row and this row. That's of the first matrix. And then what we're going to do is multiply them respectively by each one of these pieces. So there's two ways to set this up. The first way is just to take this 4 times this 1. Notice I have 4 going across, 4 going down. I'm just going to multiply each one of these respectively by each one of these terms going down. So 4 times 1 plus negative 3 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 3 times 1 just means that since these are all 1's, I'm going to just add these up and I'm going to get my 5. Notice that this is row 1 and this is column 1 of this matrix, so I'm going to get row 1, column 1, there's only one column, get this value here. Similarly, I'm going to go down here and multiply each one of these respectively by each one of these going down. So 2 times 1, 0 times 1, 5 times 1, 1 times 1, and then add them, and I'm going to get my 8. Another way to do it is to just take each one of these values and multiply it by each one of the columns that we do have going down. So I have that here. And if you notice, I got the 4 plus the negative 3 plus the 1 plus the 3 adds up to my 5. And then similarly, I can get the 8. So why don't you go ahead and try multiplying this set and see what you end up getting. Well, I have the answer here, but make sure you can get that. So if I multiply over here now, <coughs> I can take the 4 times the 1, negative 3 times the 4, and the 1 times the negative 1, 3 times 3. I get this right here, which equals my 0. First row of the first matrix, first column of the second matrix, gives me this position 1, 1. First row, first column. Similarly, second row multiplied by these gives me second row, first column. So that's how we multiply. So let's look at these things. Now, this one here takes uh, the matrix A and multiplies by the great, the other great summing machine. Look at this, 1's. What does that do to each one of these values? Well, it just adds up this row. If these were all your marbles and you had different colors of marbles, I don't know how you have negative 3 marbles, but to add up how many total you do have, you can just multiply by a column matrix of all 1's. That's the great summing machine. The other one, the other one is the integral. A column with all 1's gives us uh, this result. So this would be AX is equal to b. Here we have ax is equal to the zero vector. So that's a different situation that we do have that we are interested in. What values here map us to zero? Now what are we doing here when we multiply these two? Well this right here is my r4. And when I get my result, I'm going to be in R2. So I'm mapping from a fourth dimension, and I'm sorry, that's the R4 vector. This is the R2 vector there. And so we're mapping from R4 to R2. And the notation on the transformation is this right here, T colon R4 to R2. R4 is what we call the domain of T while R2 is called the codomain of RT. So what we start with is the domain, and what we finish with is the codomain. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this notation right here, T of X, and that is going to be the image of X. T of X is the same thing as A times X under matrix transformations. So if we do this in general, we want to map from Rn to Rm. We have Rn is going to be our domain, and Rm is going to be our codomain. So we're going to be mapping from 
and it's transformation or mapping, we're going to be mapping from my Rn to my Rm. And x, in some places, is called a preimage. I didn't see that in our text, but preimage. And then t of x is called the image. So that's what we are uh, uh, producing in Rm. And then t of x is equal to a times x, where x is our vectors there. So what's the dimension of our matrix A? Is it either m by n or n by m? Well, they kind of set you up by doing it alphabetically. But look up here. This was a transformational matrix, which was a 2 by 4. And with a 2 by 4, I mapped from R4 to R2. So it's kind of reverse of what we have. So matrix A is going to be a M by N matrix. And that's how you can switch from RM to RN. I said that wrong, RN to RM. So let's look at this example that we do have here. We want A to be this matrix, U, B, and C. So we'll just do whatever they ask us to do. So here's A, write out T of X, which is the same thing as A of X. Note that this is a 3 by 2 matrix. So this means that we're going to be taking vectors from R2 and moving them into R3. So I set up a times x, and so this is the vector that we do have here. And Remember that we go across with the first matrix and down with the second. So I put those little lines in there, and note that we do have a 3 by 2, as we said, times a 2 by 1. 3 by 2. 3 by 2 times a 2 by 1 gives me a 3 by 1 matrix. So that does move me over, so let's see how this works. What I like to do is just put the matrix right below my second matrix, in this case the vector matrix. So when I go 1 times my neg uh, 1 times x1 and negative 2 times x2, I'm just going to put it right here. So if I put all this together, I'm going to get this vector right here. So 1, 2, 3 items. And I just took 1, negative 2 times these respectively, get here. 3 and 4, here, here, get that. 5, negative 2, there, there, there. Part B says let's find T of U. So that's A times U. So if I multiply that out like we just did, then I end up with negative 4, negative 2, negative 12. And then that would be mapping this vector from R2 over to R3. And notice that this matrix is a 3 by 2. Okay, so you need a 3 by 2 transformational matrix to move from R2 to R3. Rows would be where we end up, and columns is where we started from. Domain, codomain. Part C, then, says find an X in R2 whose image under T is B. So now I have my A. My X is equal to B, and I want to solve that. How do we do that? Well, obviously, we go to an augmented matrix. Note that B is maybe different from the original notes I made because it didn't work out. This one works out. So if I take my augmented matrix and I do re reduced row echelon form, I'm going to get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, and then 0, 0, 0. So what happens here is that this vector right here would map over to this vector R2 to R3 based upon trying to find out where this vector is for us. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Part D is very similar. Try it with C. If I do the same setup with the augmented matrix, I'm going to get this. Look at this row. 0 is equal to 1. So that means that there is not a C that is in the range for this transformation T. So that means that there is no vector in R2 that will map to T of X is equal to C in R3. Okay? I did this out of order. I should have done E first. But is there more than one X whose image under T is B? Going back down here at the bottom, is there more than one that would work? Well, we only get a unique solution down here, and that unique solution tells me no, 
There are no others. So we just have a unique solution here. Okay, because we found just that one here. All right, example number two. This becomes the fun stuff, and I hope you did the Scooby-Doo video and tried that first before you did this, but if not, we can still work with it. How does the matrix A transform XYZ under X maps to AX? So instead of using X1, Y1, I'm sorry, X1, X2, X3 there, I use XYZ just because some of you are more used to it. But let's see what happens here under this transformation. So if I take my dimensions here, I'm going to have a 3 by 3, and I'm multiplying it by a 3 by 1. So when we do that, we're going to get a 3 by 1 again. So this one would be 1, 0, 0 times the respective values x, y, and z. So I'm just going to get an x. 0, 1, 0 multiplied by these three would be a y. And notice the last row here is going to be all zeros times each one of these, so I'm just going to end up with a zero. So I'm going to get x, y, zero. What that means is that I took coordinates from three dimensions, x, y, z, and all I'm getting out of it are the x and y coordinates. So what we call this is a projection onto the x, y plane. You can look at your book for some of those pictures. I don't have anything for you, but it takes any, any visual that you have. Say, for instance, you have Scooby-Doo three dimensions. It can take the projection of that Scooby-Doo and then just put it into two dimensions on the XY plane. How about this one here? B, what's the transformation? And then this is a different notation, too. It just means that I'm taking my Xs and I'm doing a transformation under B to get my new values. What is this one going to do? Well, I hope you can see that I'm just going to end up with x0, z. So this is a projection onto which plane? Yes, the x, z plane. And I think you can figure out how to manipulate this transformational matrix in order to project on any plane that you do want. There's some nice examples in your book about some shearing but I think the best thing to do is to look at your spreadsheet and practice some of these. So you do have the matrix, this right here, which might lead to some shearing. Or you might even have this one. Figure out what's the difference by using your Scooby-Doo visuals to sort that out. I hope you have fun with that one. And then this is 1.8. This is all done. I hope you have a great day.